everyone, XPT here, back with another guide. I'm a challenger player over on EU West, and I've been making some guides recently, and I'm streaming most days of the week, so come check me out on my Twitch stream, linked in the description below. In this guide, we're going to focus on the most popular build that has been used over in the Korean server in high ALO. It's pretty surprising to me that this build has been so popular in Korea because over in NA and EU there's so few people who are running it in high ELO and I even am not really running it much but I just started to and yesterday I played I was spamming this pretty much and just forcing it and I ended up doing really well. I played like six or seven games with it in Challenger MMR and like, I came fifth in a really low roll game, but otherwise I came first twice, and other than that, I was always second or third, or, or at least top four. So it worked really well, and that was yesterday on 9.16. With the new changes to 9.16b, I really imagined that this could be even stronger, uh, with nobles and void brawlers getting nerfed. I think some new builds could come up in the meta, like demons, or maybe some builds that focus around elementals, and uh, ranges. I think ranges will also be back, uh, and this version seems like the strongest. It's the one that's been used the most in Korea. Uh, before I continue with the guide, I kind of want to give a shout out to Ace of Spades, DAC. I've been watching his YouTube channel, uh, very informative, and it definitely helped me quite a bit, and he did already make a guide on this, but this will be my version, which will probably be a bit longer, and go into a bit more details maybe. So as we see here, this is the seven unit squad that you want to end up with. It's never going to really be very different from this. You want to end up with this uh, at level seven all the time. There's no variation. Um, a lot of people, when they think about ranger comps, they think they need tons of attack speed items. They think, like, they need to put attack speed items on all of their different ranges, and they need to make each one of their ranges do tons of damage. That's really not the case, and it's not what this comp wants. This comp is focused around phantom buff. Like, uh, phantom buff is one of the critical components of it. You want to get someone really low early in the fight and then as we notice we have tons of splash and AoE damage so these are the key items we got static shiv on ash we got ionic spark on varus it's not as important and then we got morellos on uh, sedrani with ga so that she can ult more than once usually uh, and artrox also does a lot of AoE so if we notice we've got a lot of AoE damage Static Shift does AoE, Varus does AoE with his ult, he's also holding Static Shift. Sejuani does AoE damage, Artrox does AoE damage. And so, the point is, you, early game, you basically, early in the fight I mean, you're gonna phantom someone, and that person is gonna almost always instantly die. The reason for this is because he'll be brought to almost zero health, and then... Uh, inevitably, the Static Shiv is going to finish him off. If not the Static Shiv, then the Ionic Spark will finish him off. And if these items don't finish him off, he still needs to worry about a random Varus Arrow that might hit that Phantom. Otherwise, like, uh, Sejuani Ult or Artrox Ult might hit it. So it's going to be really hard for whoever gets Phantom to survive long in the fight. Even, like... Draven with a Bloodthirster uh, won't always survive against Phantom. And then once that once that unit dies, you've got a you killed one of the units, and the fight continues. And then there's going to be more AOE damage. There's like usually the person dies from just the Ionic Spark or the Static Shift, and then there's going to be more AOE from Sejuani or Artrox. Uh, who like uh, freeze them? They these two are big frontline units as well. Uh, and there's like every three hits, there's more static shift procs, more AOE. So it's more like 
it's not attack damage focused or attack speed focused on your carries. Rather, it's more like AOE damage and splash damage from the items and the ultimates combined of your units, basically. So that's the idea behind the this build. Let's talk a bit about the early game. It's pretty standard. You, you basically want to construct the strongest team you can in the early game. And... You know, you usually end up, you usually start with some kind of night start. Like if you got Mordekaiser and Garen, that's pretty good. Or like Darius and, and Garen. Like you usually start off with some type of knights when you have this build. Now let's talk about some signals to go into this build. Because you, you basically always, up to level 5 or level 6, you're always just focusing on fielding the strongest team into the arena you can. Uh, but what are some clear signals that you may want to pivot into this build? So it's going to be if you pick up an early Mordekaiser and an early Vayne. Because these are two one-cost units that are going to be core units throughout the entire game with this build. Uh, except maybe in the very late game you can remove Mordekaiser. But these are two core units, so definitely watch out for these two. If you have these two, it could be a good signal to potentially go into this build composition. Uh, another signal is if you pick up the other two ranges early. So if you pick up Varus and Ash early game, then that's a clear signal, obviously, that you may want to go into ranges. Um, also, Artrox and Varus, because this is a clear signal that you can go into the demons. You can put in two demons. And actually, if you get these two early, you'll and if you have, like, Let's say you're at level 5 with this squad. Uh, you're going to have two rangers, you're going to have two demons, you're going to have two knights. This is a, a really strong early game squad that's going to be able to carry you to level like 7, basically. You don't need to do much, uh, especially if you get all of these units upgraded. So this is really amazing. And you can put on Sejuani's items onto Garen in this situation, which is great. Another thing, instead of the demons, you could get glacials. You probably won't find Sejuani early, but you could uh, use Braum. And this way you have two ranges and two glacials. So again, this is a, a good way to transition during the early to mid game. With, let's say, another knight again at level 5. Um, if at level 5 you manage to find Kindred, that is just really, really huge. You get early Phantom buff. Um, and if you got Kindred, it, very often you can also get 4 Rangers. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, and then at level 6 you can have 2 Knights. So if you find an early Kindred, that's really amazing because you're going to get Phantom. And the earlier in the game you can phantom someone, the better, because right now, if you're at level 5 and you can phantom someone, you're, you're removing 1 out of 5 units. That's a lot better than removing 1 out of 9 units. The longer the game goes, the less valuable phantom is. So phantom early in the game, it's really huge, and it's, it's a pretty big signal that you might want to pivot into ranges. Okay, so those were all the early game things you want to look out for and what might incline you to pivot into the this end game ranges tree. Okay, so let's go back here and just quickly talk about the items. You don't need too many items. It's not a very item-reliant comp. Again, you don't need tons of attack speed items or attack damage items. What you need is you need a Morellos. You really need Morellos. You want to have a Morellos onto Sejuani eventually. That will be really important. And preferably also a Guardian Angel on Sejuani. And you do need one Static Shiv. Like, only one though. You don't need multiple Static Shivs. One Static Shiv is enough. Now you could put... Uh, if you don't find Ash early, you could put the Static Shiv onto Varus early in the game. But I wouldn't put more than one static shiv on Varus. Ash is a champion who you want to be putting lots of static shivs on. Or, or Ash is going to be your your carry in this comp. Like she's not a real carry. She won't be doing too much damage on her own. It's going to be the items that give her the extra damage. But like she uses static shiv extremely well. So you can put 
as many static shifts as you want. You can do double static shift plus Shojins, but you just need one static shift. You could put a Rage Blade on uh, with the Shojins, or I don't know. The, like these attack speed items are generally going to be the best. Hurricane works really well on her as well uh, because uh, she's got Glacial Buff, right? Although there's usually going to be better uses for Spatula, as we'll see later on. Now, the other item that is really great, uh, it's not a core item, but it's Ionic Spark. It's not a core item because it got nerfed a bit, but you can stack it now, which is pretty cool. And it definitely helps with this team comp a lot. Uh, basically, again, with Phantom Buff, if you got Ionic Spark, if the guy casts a spell, he's going to die from that Ionic Spark, which is really good. Or if not die, almost die, Static Shift will finish him off. So that's it for the core items. You can put uh, more attack speed items here. On So for other itemization, don't put items on Kindred, usually because Kindred just isn't... Uh, with Hextech now, we want to put Kindred between Ash and Varus in most situations so that Hextech doesn't affect them. And uh, you want to position around Hextech like that. On Varus, you can put utility items, so red buff works very well on him. Oh, Hush can work fine on him. Mm, Curse Blade actually is okay on both of them. And if you end up getting like more than enough Morellos, you can put another one on him, like if you have nothing else to build with your items. But yeah, on Varus you build Utility, Yumi's also works very well, and also like Utility and things that are good for his ultimate, because his ult is his main damage source, so you can put AP items on him if you get these for some reason. Although, I wouldn't put too many items on him. On Artrox, the best item for him is a Guardian Angel. Not essential, but if you get an Ar uh, a Guardian Angel onto Artrox, that's going to be really good for him. Dragon Claw works really well. Uh, Phantom Dancer, War Marks. You want to put defensive items in general on Artrox, although you could also put a Gunblade on him for a more offensive item. But you don't need items on Artrox. He's there for the frontline and the Demon Synergy with Varus. Okay, so that's it for the core build at level 7, and the core items, and the general way you want to spread your items. Also, this is good default positioning against the lobby. Uh, you got Vayne here to get hooked, you got Mordekaiser to get Blitzcrank hooked, so you can't get Blitzcrank hooked from any angle with this. Uh, and also... You got your Ash and Varus very well protected, and there's nothing that can get hex teched. So late game, you might want to switch your positioning, but in the early through mid game, when there's still like four or more players in the lobby, this would be a good default positioning. So let's talk about how we can make this team stronger at level eight, uh, because this is a great team, and you're going to be able to top four, but if you want to win the game, you need to add some power. So in order to make your team stronger, if you get to level eight, one of the simplest things you can do is you find Karthus. So if you find Karthus, you, you have that phantom synergy. So you can replace Mordekaiser with Karthus, and then you put in usually another, well, usually Poppy would work here. That gives you two knights back. Um, if you find Kale 2, you can put in Kale 2, but Poppy 2 is better than Kale 1. But at level 8, uh, Night Buff isn't, like, 2 Knights isn't super valuable at level 8. So you could also just not care about the Night Buff. You could put in another Legendary. So if you find, let's say, Swain or Yasuo, like, if you upgrade these units to 2 star, then it's going to be better to put them in rather than just a 2 star Poppy in. Just forget about your night buff. So that's one thing you could do at level 8. But actually, most variations uh, I've seen the Koreans use involve a spatula 
So they'll very often just be getting a spatula. And there's three different types of spatulas you can use. The first type of spatula you can use as a knight's vow. Really good. So if you get a knight's vow at level 8, you've got four knights. So you, again, poppy 2. Unless you find kale 2, then you can find kale 2. That would be really good. So that's what you can do with a knight's vow. If you find darken, you can put that on Ash. It also works on Kindred, but now with the hex deck changes, probably not ideal to put it on Kindred anymore. And with Darkin, uh, you got four demons. The preferred fourth demon would be Swain, of course, although uh, if you can't find Swain, Morgana will do the trick. Finally, there's going to be uh, the Glacial, so you can make Varus the Glacial, really good on him, for some extra crowd control, and you just bring in another Glacial. So if you want more of a front line, I'd suggest Braum. Upgraded Braum is very, very tanky. He's a good single tanky unit. If you want more like uh, crowd control and someone to hit the enemy backline more, Anivia is your preferred option. So... That's about it for what you can do with the different spatula items and who you put it on and what type of units you want to look for at level 8. And basically that's going to be about it for this guide. There's not many other ways to... Like once you're at level 8, you're going to be quite late game. And as I said, I think this is a comp that will come back into the meta. Oh, one other thing that might happen is you might have a lot of trouble finding Sejuani because Sejuani is one of the most contested picks. So if you really cannot find Sejuani um, and you're taking too long, then you could go with the Guardian version. Although the Koreans really seem to not use this as much. But the Guardian version would be like this at level 7. You have your two Guardians and Phantom still, but you're lacking a lot of crowd control from Sejuani. And then you level up to 8 and find Sejuani there. But this this is not the preferred version by the Koreans. They prefer the version with Artrox, because Artrox provides a bigger mid-game power spike. However, this if you can get to level 8 with this, will still be very strong. But that's going to be it for my guide. And I think this will be very strong now with the nerfs to nobles and void uh, brawlers. So thank you for watching, everyone. Have a good day.